It's all over, Mr. Stingley. Thank you, ma'am. May I? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Ah. Oh. This is indeed a pleasure, sir. Now, you mustn't be offended at what I'm going to say. You've had a long walk and I wouldn't mention it. Will you take a little drop of something, Mr. Bumble? Uh, not a drop, not a drop. Just a little drop, with a little hot water and a lump of sugar. Uh, what is it? I'll not deceive you, Mr. B. It's gin. I'm obliged to keep a little in the house to put in the infant's daffy when they ain't well, Mr. Bumble. You're a very humane woman, Mrs. Corley. I, uh, I shall take an early opportunity of mentioning it to the board, Mrs. Corley. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I, uh, I drink your health with cheerfulness, Mrs. Corley. We are forgetting business, ma'am. The child that was half baptized, Oliver Twist, is nine year old today. He's the worst disposed boy I ever did see. Small wonder, ma'am. We've never been able to discover his parentage. How come did he have a name, then? I invented it. You, Mr. Bumble? I, Mrs. Corley. I name all our foundings in alphabetical order. The last was an S. Swabble, I named him. This was a T. Twist, I named him. Why, well, you're quite a literary character, sir. <laughs> well, well, perhaps I may be, Mrs. Corley. Perhaps I may be. Now. Let me see the boy. Twist! Come here! Make a bow to the gentleman. You're to come along with me, boy. You're to be presented to the board. Gentlemen, it is my considered opinion that our charity is being presumed upon. Here, here. Here, here. This workhouse has become a regular place of entertainment for the poorer classes. <laughs> Gentlemen, it is our duty to set this to rights. We'll stop it in no time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Come in. Case number six. Bow to the board. What's your name, boy? Oliver. Oliver Trusser. You know it's your birthday? No, sir. Boy's a fool. Boy, listen to me. You know you're an orphan. What's that, sir? Boy's a fool. I thought he was. Hush. You know you've got no father or mother and were brought up by the parish, don't you? 
Yes, sir. I hope you say your prayers every night. Yes, sir. And pray for the people who feed you and take care of you. Yes, sir. Well, you're going to be educated and taught a useful trade. You'll begin to pick oakum tomorrow morning at six o'clock. provision. O oh Lord, we thank thee. Please, sir, I want some more. What? 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 Ask for more? Ah, uh, good morning, Mr. Bumble, sir. Good morning. I've just taken the measure of the two women that died last night. Oh. Coffins are looking up, Mr. Savre. Ah, thank you. You'll make your fortune, Mr. Savre. The prices allowed by the board are very small, Mr. Bumble. Uh, so are the coffins. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Mr. Bumble, there's no denying that. But we must have some profit, Mr. Bumble. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, by the way, you don't know anybody who wants a boy, do you? A parochial plenty. Um, liberal terms, Mr. Savre. Liberal terms. I'll take him. Oliver. Yes, sir. Pull that cap off your eye. And hold your head up, sir. Be good enough to tell Mr. Sarbury that the beadle is here. Oh, please to come in, sir. Is that you, Mr. Bumble? No one else, Mr. Sarbury. Here, I brought the boy. Ah. 
So this is the body, is it? Yes, sir. Who's that? My dear, this is the boy from the workhouse I told you of. He's very small. He is rather small, then. He is small, there's no denying it. But uh, he'll grow, Mrs. Sabri. I dare say he will, on our food and our drink. There, get downstairs, little bag of bones. Charlotte? Yes, ma'am? Give the boy some of the cold bits put by for trip. Yes, ma'am. Well, I suppose you're the new boy, aren't you? Yes, sir. There you are. Oh, thank you, ma'am. On the box, workhouse, on the box. Workers, do you know who I am? No, sir. I'm Mr. Noah Claypole, and you're under me, so don't you forget it. No, sir. Have you done? Yes, sir. Then come with me. Come on, get up. Your bed's under the counter. You don't mind, I suppose? No, no. It doesn't much matter whether you do or you don't, for you can't sleep anywhere else. Here. Take this. Get in here. Good-looking boy, that, my dear. He need be. He eats enough. <sighs> There's an expression of melancholy in his face, my dear, which is very interesting. Well? He'd make a delightful mute, my love. I don't mean a regular mute to attend grown-up people, my dear, but only for children's practice. Depend upon it, it would have a most superb effect. A coffin. I'll fix the missus. No. No, no. I want to see the boy. Who oh, workers? Is that a job? Who are you? I knew his mother. Nursed her when she died. Died in the workhouse, eh? I haven't got much time. God to see him. <laughs> Mrs. Charlotte, Mrs. Come in. How is 
is she this evening? She hasn't much strength left in her. She's troubled in her mind. And when the fits aren't on, and that's not often, she keeps saying she's got something to tell. She wants to see the matron. You'd better fetch her. Come in. Yes? If you please, mistress, all Sally's are going fast. What's that to me? I can't keep her alive, can I? She says she's got something to tell that you must hear. She'll never die quiet until you come, mistress. Did she say any more, Martha, dear? Not a word. Cold tonight, Mrs. Corney. Really cold indeed, sir. If you have to wait long, I shall be surprised. Put the light on the floor. She won't see it there. Good night, sir. Good night. be long, mistress. None of us have to wait long. It'll come soon enough for us all. a pretty young creature. She gave birth to a boy and died. Go on. Yes. They would have treated him better if they'd known me to know. Known what? And I think it was the year. Never mind about the year. What about him? Aye, what about him? What about I know. Uh, turn him away. This is Annie, dear. Get out! Get out! Go on, both of you. Get out! Hurry! Get out! Right, go on. Nothing to tell after all. Nothing. Come up and sit by the fire, Noah, dear. I'll never shut that door behind Mr. Noah's back. I saved a nice bit of bacon from the master's breakfast for you, Noah, dear. Oliver, here's your tea and take them bits. And make haste, because they want you to mind shop. Do you hear? Do you hear, Walker? What, girls? That's your mother. She's dead. What'd she die of, what girls? They said she died of a broken heart. What's set to us, Nivelin? Not you. Oh, not me, eh? No, not you. You'd better stop saying things about my mother. Better stop. Workhouse, don't be impudent. You know, Workhouse, your mother must have been a regular right down bad'un. 
What did you say? A regular right down bad in workhouse. And it's a great deal better workhouse than she died when she did. Or else she'd have been doing hard labour in Bridewell. Or transported. Or hung. Which is more likely than either, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Mum, fetch the beetle. Well, then. Oh. Where is this audacious young savage? Is your voice, sir? Yes. Ain't you afraid of it, sir? Ain't you a trembling while I speak, sir? No. The boy must be mad. It's not mad, this man. It's meat. What? Meat, man, meat. If you'd kept the boy on gruel, this would never have happened. What's the meaning of this? Young Twist has turned vicious, sir. Try to murder me, sir. Did kill the missus? You're a nice young fella, ain't you? He said things about my mother. By all accounts, she deserved them. That's a lie. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Don't spare him, sir. Oh! Don't spare him. to bed. He comes of a bad family, sir. Excitable natures, Mrs. Sarbury. That mother of his made her way here against difficulties and pain that would have killed any well-disposed woman weeks before. My parochial apologies, sir.
Do you want him? Come on in. Here he is, Fagin. My friend Oliver Twist. Very glad to see you, Oliver. Very. Aren't we, my dears? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah how far have you come? I've been walking for seven days. Walking for seven days? Beak's yeah. all, eh? Do you know what a beak is, my dear? A bird's master. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, all of you. A beak is a magistrate, my dear. Don't you take off the sausages. Sit down, Oliver. There are a great many of them, ain't there, my dear? Yes, sir. We've just looked them out ready for the wash. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've been at work, Dodger. Odd. Good boy. Good boy. And free wipes. A genius worker, ain't he, Oliver? Very indeed, sir. <laughs> You'd like to make pocket handkerchiefs as easily as the artful dodger, wouldn't you, my dear? Yes, if you teach me, sir. We will, my dear, we will. <laughs> to work, Terry, Fred. <laughs> Thank you. 
Speak up, boy, quick. I couldn't sleep any longer, sir. What have you seen? Nothing, sir. You were not awake an hour ago. No, no, indeed, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Tcha-tcha, my dear. I only tried to frighten you. Did you see any of those uh, pretty things, dear? Yes, sir. They... Uh, they're mine, Oliver. All I have to live on in my old age. They call me a miser. May I get up now, sir? Certainly, dear, certainly. They've gone to work, Oliver. Make them your models. Do everything they bid you do. Take their advice in all things. Especially the artful dodgers. He'll be a great man himself one day and will make you one too. Is my handkerchief hanging out of my pocket, dear? Yes, sir. See if you can take it without my feeling it. Is it gone? Yes. Here it is. Ah, oh, you clever boy. Here's a, a shilling for you. If you go on this way, you'll be the greatest man of the time. You do.
Is this the boy, sir? Yes, I'm afraid it is. Afraid? That's a good one. Poor little fellow, he's hurt himself. I did that, sir. I stopped him. I cut my knuckles against his mouth. Come on, get up. Make way there. Make way. Come on. Don't hurt him, officer. Oh, no, I won't. <laughs> oh, you know he's... Do you want to get raped? I can't help it. I can't help it. <laughs> what will Fagin say? Where's Ivor? Where's the boy? What will become of the boy? Be or I'll throttle you! Let go of me! The tramps have got him, and that's all about it. What's it all about, Fagin? Uh, it's lucky the pot didn't hit me, or I might have settled someone. Come in, Mr. Sykes. Come in. None of your mystery, and you know my name. Come in, you sneaking cur. What are you hanging about there for? Go on, get in, will you? Will you take a drink, Bill? See, you don't poison it, neither. Here. What's he been up to? Ill treating the boys again, eh? You avaricious old fence. You seem out of humour, Bill. Yeah, maybe I am. And you seem kind of out of sorts, too. What's in the wind, Fagin? It's a new boy. The traps have got him. Well, what of it? I'm afraid, you see, he may say something that'll get us into trouble. That's very likely. You blowed upon, Fagin. I'm afraid, you see. If the game was up with us, it might be up with a good many more. It would come out rather worse for you than it would for me, wouldn't it, my dear? Again. Somebody ought to go and find out what's going on at the police court. Somebody ought to go there, Fagin. And about time, too. Ah, Nancy, the very thing. She's a clever girl. Here's to her. Nancy will go, won't you, my dear? Where's? Only just to the police court, my dear. What do you say? That it won't do, Fagin, so it's no use you trying it on. What do you mean by that? Well, what I say, Bill? Well, you're the very one for it. No one around here knows anything about you. And as I don't want them to, neither, it's rather more no than yes with me, Bill. She'll go, Fagin. Oh, no, she won't, Fagin. Oh, yes, she will, Fagin. Yes? Is there a little boy here? Who are you? His sister. You have to wait. The case is on now. Now, what is the charge against this boy? Stealing a handkerchief, Your Worship. I'd rather not press the case. Hold your tongue, sir! Are there any witnesses? None, Your Worship. What is your name? What is your name? He's been hurt, and I fear, I really fear he's very ill. Oh, yes, I dare say. Come now, none of your tricks here, you young vagabond. What is your name? What's your name? Hmm? Uh, he says his name's Tom White, Your Worship. Very well. Where does he live? Where do you live? Uh, where he can, Your Worship. Please, sir. 
But I have some water. Stop the nonsense! Don't try and make a fool of me! I'm afraid he really is in the ocean. I know that. Take care, he's going to fall. Stand away! Let him be nice. How do you propose to deal with the case, sir? Quiet! What's this? Who is this? I keep the bookstore. I saw it all. It was another boy. Why didn't you come before? Couldn't get a soul to mind the shop. Swear the man. Bring him out of the court fainting. He gets in a carriage with this gentleman and they drive off. He'll blow on us faking for certain. That's the boy, is it? That's a boy. Nice looking boy, isn't he? I don't know. I only know two sorts of boys. Mealy boys and beef face boys. <laughs> and which is he? Really? <laughs> Is Bedwin in the habit of counting the plate at night? Because if she doesn't find a tablespoon or two missing one sunny morning, I'll be content to eat my heads up. Your move. Where does he come from? Who is he? What is he? If that boy doesn't deceive you, my good friend, I'll eat my head. And yours, too. We shall see. We will. We will. Be very quiet, or you'll be ill again. You've been very, very bad. As bad as bad could be, pretty high. Lie down again, there's a dear. There. This morning, Bedwin, I'm afraid I've got cold. <clears throat> now, uh, how do you feel, my dear? Very happy, sir. Good. Have you given him any nourishment, Bedwin? He's going to have a basin of beautiful, strong broths. Mm, a couple of glasses of port wine would do him far more good. Wouldn't they, Tom White? My name's Oliver, sir. Oliver? Oliver White, hmm? 
Who's her? Twist. Oliver Twist. Oh, that's a queer name. What made you tell the magistrate your name was White? I never told him, sir. Some mistake, some mistake. Hmm? Ah, have your broth, young man. We must get you strong again. And as soon as you're well enough, we must have a little chat. Oh, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Fool, bungler, liar. I paid you good money to make an end of the business. One sniveling boy, and you have to lose him. I'm worse off now than if I never set eyes on you. And farther still from what should be mine. What do I get? My money back? No, no, my dear, not that. I'll give you hope. Do you know the workhouse where the boy was born? Of course, I traced him from there. Then you must go back, my dear. You must go back. Tomorrow, two months, it was done. It seems a age. You going to sit there snoring all day? I shall sit here as long as I think proper, ma'am. And though I was not snoring, I shall snore, gape, sneeze, laugh or cry as the humour strikes me, such being my prerogative. Your prerogative. I said the word, ma'am. The prerogative of a man is to command. And what's the prerogative of a woman, in the name of goodness? To obey, ma'am. As your late unfortunate husband should have taught you. And then perhaps he might have been alive now. I wish he were, poor man. You brute! <laughs> Cry your hardest, ma'am. It opens the lungs, washes the countenance, exercises the eyes, and softens down the temper. So cry away. Talk about your prerogative again, if you dare. Get up. Get away from here, or I might do something desperate. Oh, certainly, my dear, certainly. You were the beetle here once, were you not? I was parochial beetle. What are you now? Master of the workhouse. Good. Now listen to me. I want some information. Carry your memory back ten years last winter. The scene, the workhouse, and the time, night. The place, the line, in room. A boy was born. I had well, many boys. He was apprenticed down here to a coffin maker. You mean young Twist? There wasn't a obstinate... It's not of him I want to hear. It's of a woman, the hag that nursed his mother. Where is she? She died last winter. One moment. Yes? There was a woman with her when she died. How can I find her? Only through me. It will be worth her while. What if I've paid you for nothing? Can easy take it away again. I'm a woman here alone and unprotected. I'm not alone, my dear. Nor unprotected, neither. You're a fool. You better hold your tongue. He'd better have it cut out if he can't speak in a lower tone. Now, let's hear your story. You were with this hag the night she died. 
Yes. There was no one by. No. She asked that we should be alone. Get up! Go on. She spoke of a young mother. Aye. Whom she nursed in that same bed. Yes. What of her? I robbed her. She wasn't cold when I stole it. Stole what? It. The only thing she had. Gold. Gold? Go on, what of it? She charged me to keep it safe. Yes? The boy's name? They called him Oliver. Yes. I... I haven't told you all, have I? No, no, be quick. She'd run away. Her father... Yes? I was to tell him. To tell him. What were you to tell him? <laughs> what? What? She said more. You're lying. She never uttered another word. But it was then that it happened. What? so I redeemed the pledge. Where is it now? There. And this is all? All. And what you expected to get from us? It is. Come in and wash your hands and let me do your hair nicely for you, child. Why? What's the matter? Mr. Brownlow wants to see you, dear, and we must make you smart as sixpence. Come in. Come in, Oliver. Come in. Yes, there are a good many books, are there not, my boy? I never saw so many, sir. How would you like to grow up a clever man and write books, eh? I think I'd rather read them, sir. What? Don't you want to be a book writer? I think I'd rather be a book seller, sir. <laughs> well said, my boy. Very well said. <laughs> now, now, Oliver, I want you to pay great attention to what I'm going to say. You're not going to send me away, sir. No, my dear, I'm not going to send you away, unless you give me cause. I'll never do that, sir. Never. Good. Somehow, I feel that you and I are going to be good friends. Oh, thank you, sir. I trust you, Oliver. And I find myself more interested in your behalf than I can well account for. Even to myself. Are you fond of pictures, Oliver? I don't quite know, sir. Now that is a portrait. A likeness. She's very pretty, sir. Yes, she was very pretty. Uh, any muffins for tea? Hello. What's that? This is young Oliver Twist. You don't mean to say that's the boy who had the fever, I hope? That's all over now. Come and speak to my young friend. How are you, boy? A great deal better, thank you, sir. Hmm. And when are we going to hear an account of his history, eh, my friend? I think we'll have our tea first, eh, Oliver? Oh, is that the bookseller? Yes, sir. Well, uh, stop the boy. There are some to go back. He's gone, sir. Oh, dear me. I particularly wanted to return some tonight. Send Oliver with them. He'll be sure to deliver them safely, you know. Yes, do let me go, sir. I'll run all the way. Ah. You shall go, my boy. The books are on a chair by my table. 
Fetch him down. Let me see. He'll be back in 20 minutes at the longest. Yeah, so you really expect him to come back, do you? Well, don't you? No, I do not. The boy has a new suit of clothes on his back, a set of valuable books under his arm, and a five-pound note in his pocket. If ever that boy returns to this house, sir, I'll eat my head. Oh. Oliver! Oliver, Oliver, oh, you naughty boy! Help! Oh, my dear little brother, I found him. Thank goodness gracious heavens, I found him. Let go of me. You cruel boy. Come home directly. What's the matter, Mum? He ran away near a month ago from his parents. Hard-working, respectable people. I didn't. He went and joined a set of thieves and bad characters and nearly broke his mother's heart. You little wretch. I'm not. I haven't got a mother. Go home, you little brute. I live in Pendenville. Oh, listen, how he braves it out. Come home to your mother, will you, you young dog? I don't know them. I don't belong to them. What's this? He's been stealing again. Oh, no, Bill. Come right, on. Right, that's the only way to beat until he sent it. You're all right. You're in good, too. Yeah, and you get it, too. Come on, you young villain. so well, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you write and say you was coming? We'd have got something hot for supper. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? That's mine, Fagin. No, no, my dear. Mine, Bill. Mine. You shall have the books. If that ain't mine, mine and Nancy, that is, I'll take the boy back again. Now, come on, hand over, will you? Where is it? This is hardly fair, Bill. Hardly fair, is it, Nancy? Fair or not fair, give it here, you avaricious uh, old skeleton. Uh, uh, uh. Give it. Yeah. Take the books if you're fond of reading. If you ain't, sell them. Help! Help! Who's on it? Give it that, Bill. You tear the boy to pieces. Have it right. No, you I don't. You'll stand off of me or I'll split your head in. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> What's the matter here? The girl's gone mad. No, she ain't. Thank you. No, she ain't. Don't think it. Then keep quiet, will you? No, I won't do that neither. What do you think of that? So you wanted to get away, my dear? Did you? Eh? Wanted to get assistance. Called for the police, did you? 
We'll soon cure you of that, my young master. Don't take it. You've got the boy. What more do you want? Let him be. Let him be, or I'll put that mark on some of you that'll send me to the gallows before me time. Why, Nancy, you're more clever than ever tonight. Ha <laughs> ha. You're acting beautiful, dear. Am I? Then take care I don't overdo it. You'll be the worse for it, Fagin, if I do. What do you mean by this? You're a nice one, a pretty subject for the boy to make a friend of. So help me, I am. I wish I'd been struck dead in the street before lending hand to bring him here. He's a thief, a liar, a devil, and all that's bad from this night on. Isn't that enough of the old wretch without blows? Come, come, Sykes, we must have civil words, civil words, Bill. Civil words, civil words, you villain. Yes, you deserve them from me. I thief for you when I was a child not half his age. And I thief for you ever since, don't you know it? And if you have, it is your living. Aye, it is. It is my living. On the cold, wet, dirty streets of my own. And you're the wretch that drove me to them long ago. And that'll keep me there, day and night, day and night. And night. And I'm not going to send that if you say much more. <laughs> It's the worst of having to deal with women, my dears, but they're clever and we can't get on in our line without them. Dodger, show Ivor to bed. He hadn't better wear his best suit tomorrow, had he, Fagin? Certainly not. The Dodger should give you another suit, my dear, for fear that Sunday one should get stolen. <laughs> <laughs> his bedroom? I'm afraid he's lost his way, sir. You mean he never went there, eh? There you are. The boy's an imposter. It can't be. It can't be. What do you mean, it can't be? You old women never believe anything but quack doctors and lying storybooks. He was a dear, grateful, gentle child, sir. I know what children are and have done these 40 years. And people who can't say the same shouldn't say anything about them. That's my opinion. That'll be all, Bedwin. Well, I'll take the liberty, if you'll allow me, of helping us both to a glass of sherry. Don't you know the devil when he's got 
got a great coat on. <laughs> ah, Nancy. Well? Well, my dear, it's about the crib of Chetsy. Well, what about it? Ah, you know what I mean, my dear. He knows what I mean, Nancy, don't he? No, we don't. And don't stand there talking to me in hints as though you weren't the first what thought about the robbery. Shh, somebody will hear us. Well, let him in. I don't care. There, there, my dear. It was only my caution, nothing more. Now, Bill, I've got the boy. You can... What's the matter? I didn't know whether she might be out of sorts as she was before. Go on, Fagan. Tell him it's Oliver. Ah, oh, you're a clever one, my dear. The sharpest girl I ever saw. It was about Oliver I was going to speak. <laughs> Him. Yes, Bill, it's time he began to earn his bread. Besides, the others are all too big. He's about the size I want. And we'll do everything you want if you frighten him enough. When's it to be done? Ah, to be sure. When is it to be done, eh? Tomorrow night. Good. It's all arranged about bringing off the swag. It's all planned. Now you hold your tongue and keep your melting pot ready. That's all you have to do. Now leave us alone, will you? singer who's never appeared in public before. Miss Lucy Willow. This morning early, my malady was such. I in my tea took brandy, and I took a drop too much. This is the only proof of the boy's identity. So I've got the young devil's money at last. Now you can do what you like with him. Get him hauled up for some felony, drag him through every jail in town. It's not easy to train him to the business. That's your affair. If, um, it's not likely mine, but if the worst should come to the worst. It's no fault of mine, mind that, Fagan. I had no hand in this. Then he has 
my dear. I want you to do a piece of work for me that needs great care and caution. What is it? I want you to dodge a woman. I'll do that over. What do you want me to dodge her for? Not to do not do anything. But to tell me where she goes, who she sees, and what she says, and to bring back all the information you can. Who is she? One of us. What'll you give me? If you do it well, my dear. A guinea. One guinea. And that's what I never gave yet for such a pleasant piece of work. Barker's for B, Bill. Yeah. The persuader? I got him. Sis cripe, keys, centre bits, darkies. Nothing forgotten. You take the crowbar. Take heed. He's a rough man. Mind. What's that? The boy. Oh. What are Mr. Fagin's legs? Yeah. It's cold, Nancy, dear. It seems to go right through one. It must be a piercer to find its way through your heart. Come here, young'un. Come here! <laughs> Do you know what this is? Yes, sir. Well, if you speak a word when we're outside, You'll get a bullet through your head without warning. So if you do make up your mind to talk, you'd better say your prayers first. Now then, look sharp. We're late as it is. Come on. consequence of having seen my advertisement? Oh, not here, sir. I'm afraid to speak. Down the steps. Why do you bring me to this dark and dismal place? Because there are those who would surely murder me if they knew I was here tonight. Young woman, if you have any intelligence of this poor child, in heaven's name, put me in possession of it. Do you know a man named Monks? Monks? What do you know of this man? Well, before I tell you, sir, have I your promise that my secret will be strictly kept? 
I'll not turn on the others because, bad as they are, they never turn on me. Have I your promise for that? You have. And nobody will ever learn how you know what you do? Never. Some time ago, soon after Oliver was taken from your house in Pentonville, I saw this man, Monks, for the first time. And the other day, I saw him again. He came to a place on you, of course. There. Take care of that and do the most you can with it. It's been trouble enough to get. What are you looking at me like that for? He's gone mad. I've got that to tell you will make you worse than me. Hey. I'll look sharp or Nancy will think I'm lost. Lost? She's pretty well settled that in her own mind already. Open your mouth and say what you gotta say in plain words. Suppose that lad that's lying there... Well? Suppose that lad was to peach, to blow upon us all, first stealing out at nights to find the right folks for the purpose, then having a meeting with them in the streets, not grabbed, trapped, tried and brought to it on bread and water. But if his own fancy, do you hear me? Suppose he did this, what then? What then? I'd smash his head in. What if I did it, I that know so much and could hang so many besides myself? I'd beat your brains out. You would? Try me. If it was Charlie or the Dodger or... No matter who, I'd do the same. Poor lad. He's tired. Tired with watching for her so long. With watching for her, Bill. What do you mean? Dodger. Dodger. Tell me that again. Once again, just for him to hear. Tell you what? That about Nancy. What about her? You followed her? Yes. To London Bridge? Yes. Where she met a gentleman? So she did. A gentleman she'd gone to of her own accord who asked her to give up her pals, which she did. Well, she... She did all this. She told it all, every word, without a threat, without a murmur. She did, did she not? All right. That's just about what it was. What did she say about the boy? I told you that before. Again. Tell it again. Well... He asked her why she hadn't brought Nolly with her. Why? Why? Tell him that. Because he'd gone out on a job. With him. <laughs> what more of him? Tell him that. Tell him that. Why? That she'd bring him to London Bridge. Tomorrow. Midday. Yes? Why? Because he'd be asleep. She made me laugh when she said it. Said what? That she was going to give him a drink of loading <laughs> Put me out of here! Bill! 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 Don't speak to me, it's not safe! You won't Let be! Let me out! You won't be too violent, Bill! I mean, not too violent for safety! Get up. Oh, it's you, Bill. It is. Get up. 
There's light enough for what I've got to do. Well, why are you looking at me like that? Oh, no! Uh, no! Uh, no! Uh, no! Uh, Bill! 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 Speak to me! What have I done? You were watched tonight. Every single word you said was heard.
Murder! Brutal murder! Murder! Brutal murder! In the early hours of this morning, a young woman was brutally beaten to death by one William Sykes. If any person or person... <laughs> I first met this girl at London Bridge. I went there in response to an anonymous letter. I promised not to reveal the names of her associates. But in face of this terrible crime, I no longer consider that promise binding. <laughs> on the outside and come when I ring. Yes, sir. Where is my grandson? Grandson? I warn you that every word that passed between you and your criminal associates is known to me. Is this a trick to deprive me of my inheritance? Oh, you have no inheritance, for as you know, my daughter had a child. And it was you who, for your own gain, suppressed the only proofs of his birth and parentage. You could prove nothing. Your daughter ran away and was never heard of again. Coward. Liar. Where is Oliver Twist? I know nothing of him. We shall see. Sit down. How do you do, sir? I hope you are well. Take him away! Idiot! It only remains for me to tell you that neither of you will ever be employed in a position of trust again. You may go. Fool! I hope, sir, that this unfortunate little circumstance will not deprive me of my parochial office. Indeed it will. And think yourself well off, besides. It was all Mrs. Bumble. She would do it. That is no excuse. You were present at the sale of the locket, and indeed are the more guilty of the two in the eye of the law. For the law supposes that your wife acts under your direction. If the law supposes that, then the law is a ass. A idiot. If that's the eye of the law, then the law's the bachelor. And the worst I wish the law is that his eye may be opened by experience. By experience. <laughs> Monks. And Sykes? What about him? They say he'll be took tonight. They're looking for his dog. Fool.
Take him away. The dog! Follow the dog! What are you going to do? Sell me or let me lie here till the hunt's over. We're in this together, Fagan. Lock up. Get me a drink, will ya? Wagon! Last year, can't you say something? <laughs> Don't you know me, Dodger? Don't come near me. I'm not afraid of him. If they come here, I'll give him up. I will! You what?
Come on out, help us out loose. Hello, Chief, you hit. Do you hit? Darren, you're coming with me. Get me a rope. Come here. I knew he would. <laughs> <laughs> 